you know, earlier this week, KCPT aired the frontline documentary League of Denial, the NFL's concussion crisis, which examined brain injuries in professional football players. But finding and taking the appropriate safety measures for young athletes is very much a local concern as well. KCPT news reporters Lindsay Fote and Todd Feeback spent time with former Chiefs player Will Shields and a youth concussion specialist to learn more about current methods for diagnosing the damage. It's Friday night, and Mill Valley High School is playing its homecoming game against Bonner Springs. Let's go, baby! Early in the season, during a scrimmage, junior Isaiah Young suffered a concussion. It was a stretch play, and I cut back, and then someone from behind me grabbed my face mask and kind of spun me around and then threw me down to the ground, and I hit my head on the field. Isaiah said he got up slowly and just couldn't regain his balance. I stayed down on the ground for a little bit and the trainer came and got me, walked off and then started to do the little test to see if I had the concussion, which you could already tell that I probably did. A few days later, Isaiah was in Dr. Randy Goldstein's exam room, where assessment began of his condition. Put a finger to your nose. Since there is no way to look at the brain and see a concussion, even CAT scans can't diagnose a concussion, Doctors use a variety of methods to try to detect them. For Goldstein, it's a four-step process. Evaluate symptoms, check balance, a physical exam, and a computer evaluation system called the impact test. Today, the impact test has become uh, kind, of, kind of one of, the, one of the standards. That looks at memory, and it looks at reaction time, and it looks at kind of the overall way that the brain is thinking. The impact test, which stands for Immediate Post-Concussion Assessment and Cognitive Testing, takes about 25 minutes. Dr. Goldstein recommends that all athletes get a baseline test. The best way to get the impact test is to do one before the season starts so that we have something to base it on. And then if there is an injury, we can compare it. And if those scores have changed, it gives us a good idea of when the brain kind of gets back to normal with reaction time and memory. It's not the only thing that should be considered for return to sport or school. It's one tool that should be used in consideration along with the other things. Another way of possibly determining the severity of a head trauma is by using a Dynavision D2 machine. Will Shields, a former Chiefs player, uses this machine at his training facility in Overland Park, Kansas. If you do it every day, it'll help, help you keep your brain as sharp as it can because you are trying different things and you're testing yourself on a constant basis. This machine, developed to help retrain the brains of stroke victims, is yet another way of measuring the effects of concussions. And some people come after they see the neurologist to find out when their kid is ready to go back on the field or not, or if they're gonna choose to sit out for the rest of the season. The Dynavision D2 is not as widely used as the impact test, but both try to determine when an athlete can safely return to the field. Go back too soon and you risk your life. So if a second head injury occurs while the first one is still resolving, uh, in, in youth can result in second impact syndrome. And second impact syndrome is a life-threatening, um, potentially deadly incident that occurs because the brain gets confused and sends too much blood to the, to the brain. And so the, that, that vascular change can cause swelling and that swelling can result in death because there's nowhere for the brain to go. It's locked in that skull. The impact test was developed in the 90s for the NFL. Some question its effectiveness. Impact is the most well-known um, uh, testing system you know, in the US. But if the problem is, all you need to do is find a couple neurologists who actually deal with mild traumatic brain injuries and severe traumatic brain injuries, and they'll tell you it's out of date. Dr. Goldstein says there's room for improvement. I tell parents that ask about the um, efficacy or the, the use of all of these test, tests that we use. And I kind of explain it this way. We, it's evolving, and the research is being done, and more research is needed. And today, what we have is the, the best tests we have, I kind, of, I kind of equate to the Model T. We have a great car that can finally drive down the road, and that might be, one example might be the impact test. And because it's the best we have, we should use it. But we shouldn't stop the research or stop the evolution of the Model T becoming a cool car like a Ferrari, a Porsche, or a Mercedes. Adding to the complicated nature of protecting young athletes, 
is the fact that every brain is different. The brain is an amazing thing. It heals amazingly, but at the same time, every person's different. And it might take one child a week or two to recover from a head trauma. It might take another child six months. You just don't know. And with that, you know, the, uh, the fear of not knowing is everything. Um, the last thing any parent wants to do is have their child, you know, uh, affected for life. Uh, the unfortunate part of it is that can't happen. According to Frontline, at least 60,000 concussions occur every year on high school football fields. You know, we, we now know that multiple concussions can cause long-lasting effects. Um, I myself, I know that I had four in football and two outside of football. Short-term memory problems. Um, but you see it in athletes that are retired now. As the recent documentary by Frontline discusses, research also indicates that it's not only the major hits that are worrisome, but also the repetitive, smaller hits that play into the damage being done. These players come down with dementia and then Alzheimer's, and then they're gone. I think parents should be concerned because we are learning just in the last couple of years that NFL superstars are having problems with what now we believe were recurrent impacts over the course of a lifetime, including youth, adolescent, high school, college, and now the pros. And maybe we weren't picking that up years ago, even though it was occurring. In the old days, you get a ding and we don't think that was important. Maybe that was important and it's affecting people's lives down the road. So. When a coach or a father or a mother says, oh, I had concussions when I was a kid and I'm okay, maybe they survived, but they would be even more okay if they hadn't had recurrent head injuries and we treated them more carefully. And so I think the education and research is helping us recognize concussions and treat them correctly. Laws in many states, including Kansas and Missouri, now require that a doctor sign off on an athlete returning to play if a concussion is even suspected. I do think that rule changes are coming, and they're probably for the, not only for the safety of the athlete, but for the, um, for the saving of the sport. For one player, having a concussion hasn't phased his enthusiasm for the game. I don't really think about it. Just go out there and play, try to have fun. It's fun. I loved it. You know, it was one of those things that I would never, I cherish to, you know, and I want my kids to play. But with any impact sport, there are dangers. As more is learned about concussions and the research evolves, there's little question about the future of the sport. Football is controlled violence, much like boxing, much like uh, any other impact sport, uh, you know, lacrosse, uh, hockey. You know, it is an impact sport, it is controlled violence. You know, you are banging bodies together. And as long as you and me and parents at home are buying tickets to go see the games, they're never gonna go away. Those sports are gonna be around forever. Reporting with Todd Feeback for KCPT, Lindsay Folk. You can find more information and resources about concussions and their treatment on our website, kcpt.org.